In every human, God has implanted a principle, which we call love for freedom. It is impatient of oppression and pants for deliverance. These are the words of Phyllis Wheatley. Here is the story of a miraculous prodigy sprung from the life of a slave. In 1761, a frail girl of eight years old was purchased at an auction block by John and Susanna Wheatley. Named after the ship she sailed, Phyllis Wheatley, lost in a world of foreigners, would soon realize the luck of her fate. A slave was what she was referred to, but Phyllis received no exposure to tragic slave conditions, punishment, or strict control. Besides needlework and occasional furniture dusting, Phyllis' sole purpose in the household was to become part of the family. Though Phyllis was not a daughter of the Wheatleys, she was certainly loved and treated like one. But there was a social boundary between her and society. Literary critic Jelian Mason says, She was conscious of her color, but the degree to which she became a New Englander helped moderate this awareness during her formative years. In the home, however, Phyllis was family. The Wheatleys educated her to an extent that a normal white boy could only dream of. This was unheard of for white women. At age nine, she had mastered English. At twelve, Latin. Phyllis studied ancient history, mythology, geography, philosophy, and astronomy. Besides education, another of her main inspirations and influences was religion. She came to adopt Congressional Christianity, believing that once united with God, anyone would obtain equality in heaven. Due to her education, Phyllis became deeply interested in the literary works of Alexander Pope, John Milton, and Thomas Gray. They were highly respected poets at the time and served as a role model for the young learner. In 1767, 13-year-old Phyllis published her first poem in the Newport Mercury, telling the story of two shipwrecked visitors of the Wheatley household. In 1770, she published an elegiac poem in the morning of the death of Evangelist Priest, George Whitefield. Three years later, Lady Huntington invited Phyllis to sail to London and publish a selection of her works there. After only months of being in London, she sailed back to Boston in a hurry for Susanna Wheatley was ill and died soon after. With the British arrival to the colonies in 1775, Phyllis and the Wheatleys fled to Rhode Island where she wrote a poem to George Washington and sent it to his headquarters. Later in 1775, battles at Lexington and Concord contributed to America's gaining independence. However, America was in a difficult state, especially for a free black with limited rights. Near the end of her life, she suffered debt under a husband who had troubles managing money. Her success plummeted without the support, motivation, and financing of the Wheatleys. Phyllis wrote a collection of over 46 poems focusing on religion, piety, morality, elegies, freedom, celebration, war, and death. With her tribal and bilingual background, she developed her own originality and style. Because she revealed so little as to her views of American life in her poems, she is a controversial character. She took great notice not to offend those who accommodated, encouraged, and educated her. It is thought that many of her poems that expressed any political views were destroyed or discouraged as to the publication of, to refrain from trouble. Gwendolyn Brooks, who can compare to Phyllis Wheatley, was a notable poet who died in 2000. She was known for her strong African-American literary background and writing style. Like Phyllis, she published her first poem in a magazine at 13. Brooks is also noted for being the first to win the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry and maintaining confidence and willpower through racial prejudices. Though her life after freedom was dull, Phyllis would never be forgotten in history. She was the first black to publish a book, first African American to earn a living from her writing, and considered the first important black writer in the United States. Merle Richmond, the author of various books on Phyllis Wheatley, wrote, Phyllis inhabited a strange, ambiguous twilight zone between black society and white society. Phyllis Wheatley was one who understood her place in the world. She learned to accept it, but also to treat it as an advantage. Phyllis Wheatley, an accomplished woman of her writing, was a prodigy among British literati of her day, noted for her lively personality and sophisticated verse. It was more her life experience rather than the content of her writing, however, that left such a profound legacy. She became the face of an influence that blacks, along with women, were of no intellectual inferiority.